Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about measuring a propeller, applying prop speed, and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Getting some foul release onto the propeller was pretty much one of the last jobs we had to do before launching, which you can see we've done already. So I'll show you what was involved. Three days till launch now. Going to put the prop speed on. This is the small kit, should be more than enough for this prop. First step is to get all the old prop speed off with 80 grit. Using this uh, poly wheel on the drill to get into the hub more. The best way to get these clean and get the profile really is to media blast, which we can't do out here in the yard. So to get this last little bit off and make it look really clean, we've got two options. One is just to get in by hand, carefully avoiding the rope cutter. The other is just to film from much further away and then it's definitely clean enough to get that uh, primer on. I'm actually finding the poly disc on an angle grinder it lets me get into most places, it lets you get into the hub relatively easily onto the blades. I think this is actually the way to go. Okay, sit rep. Rope cutter's coming off. It'll give us better access anyway. All right, there we go. We can also uh, clean this up much more easily now it's off the boat. Got it pretty clean with the angle grinder. Also, you can see some numbers on here I never noticed before. 21 MRX. G52 under there. Good to have a little bit of information about it. I'm just going to measure the shaft right here where the taper stops on the prop and we'll compare it to the diameter of this prop. What we're going to try and do is measure the pitch of the prop that Damien and I picked up from the scrapyard. So to do that we need to figure out the radius of the prop. So if we come to the center, if we set this on a spindle we can get it exact but we'll get it within a millimeter or so. About 303 millimetres, we'll call it. So, radius is 303 millimetres. Now, this is our main formula for figuring out our pitch. Now what we need to do is figure out the swing angle and the rise. In order to figure out our swing angle, we take two thirds of the radius, we just calculated, mark it on the leading edge, two thirds of the radius on the trailing edge. So we'll do that now. It was 303 millimetres, so we're going to say 202 millimetres. And we need to go from here. 202. So that's our trailing edge. And then our leading edge, a little bit trickier. So 202 there is here and this is our leading edge now we're going to figure out the rise and to do that we're figuring out the difference between these two points in height so if we come down here our leading edge we have a look here we'll call it the top surface so we can call that 27 millimeters so we'll say um, leading edge is 27 millimeters and our trailing edge is 137 so trailing 137 so our right is 110 millimeters. Now, if we just transfer those points down onto the cardboard, it's our leading edge. Down here. This one. Trailing edge. And then, all I'm doing is marking the center of the hub into our cardboard. Then we can take our prop away. 
while Stu does complicated maths, I thought this was really interesting. This is a Portland navigational triangle, and I just wanted people to know that you can actually use this on land that isn't in a port. So that's our hub centre. Then we're trying to figure out the angle between these two points, which is easiest done with some sort of protractor. So we are at zero there. Call it, say, 60, 68 degrees. And this is now our swing angle. So swing angle now we know is 68 degrees. Then we have to figure out how many times we go through this swing angle in one full rotation. So, near enough, 360 divided by our swing angle of 68 degrees is 5.3 times our rise, 110 millimeters, which equals 583 millimeters. So that's how far the prop moves forward through a solid in one full rotation. Uh, so we have a, a diameter, of 606 and a pitch of 583. That's all right. So our diameter is 24 inches and our pitch is 23 inches, theoretically. So, see if we can go get it measured and see if we're close or not. This one is 24 SRZ. The one that's on Renko currently, coincidentally, is also an Austral prop, which is a 21 MRX. I'll tell you what those mean, and it also shows that we're a bit out on our measurement, but it's kind of nice to know we were in the ballpark. We were one inch out on pitch, but having said that, one inch of 24 is sort of like a four or 5% error, so not too bad, given it's just a really quick and dirty measurement you can do with very simple equipment. I rang Austral, I spoke to a guy called David, I believe. Gotta say, when I rang up Austral to get this information, I just rang up as a customer, a customer with two existing props, no inquiry to make a new purchase, didn't make any reference to promotion, whatever, and they were really helpful. So thank you, Austral, that was, you know, it was great, you know, it really was. To ring someone and just get information knowing that they're not gonna get a sale out of it was a really refreshing, Pleasant experience, I guess. So thank you. What Austral told me was that obviously first number is diameter. I currently have a 21 inch prop and the prop here is a 24 inch as we uh, measured. This letter tells you the pitch. So we could have checked it straight away. The S is telling me this is a 24. We measured it as about 23, but maybe if we'd been a little bit more accurate, we'd have got closer to 24, but turns out it's 24. M is 18, it's just in order, M 18, and if you just go through the alphabet, you get to S and it's 24, so nice and easy. R is right hand prop. The final letter determines the bore through the middle. Z apparently just says pilot hole. So this was originally sold with nothing other than a dead center pilot hole, and the customer then machined the hole in this one. Mine, the X says it's some sort of non-standard quirky thing. So neither we can really determine exactly what it was from the letter. It's a non-standard and it was customer done. It's really nice to be able to decipher these numbers now. And it's really amazing that the prop we found in the scrapyard is the same brand and amazingly close to what we need. I jumped on the Vic prop calculator again. I'd done it a while ago and I'll show you what I found. It's incredible to see how close this prop is to what we need. We could probably throw it on this prop shaft right now, if we cut that nut off, and it would work pretty well. Now the calculator is saying um, slightly bigger diameter again, but slightly less pitch. So if you average the two out, you've got to think the 24 by 24 is pretty close, but we can take this prop into a prop store and get the pitch reduced. I think it'd be crazy not to throw it on and see what the performance is like now though. Uh, you know, a little bit less diameter than recommended, but a little bit more pitch, you know, it might average out. Once you've done that, then you've got a baseline and you can do some modifications from there and compare. I'll probably do that back in Sydney. Really small chance that when Dick and I finished our holiday and come back to Bundaberg in about six weeks, we'll be here helping Damien and Jess get on the water. 
and look it's not that expensive to pull the boat out of the water if Adrian's here it is kind of tempting to do it so we've got a really long sample size doing a big trip all the way back to Sydney to compare that to the existing prop but we'll see all right let's get back to putting the prop speed on this meant uh, next step was cleaning up the rope cutter I actually used a flat disc to clean this up rather than a poly disc so that I could sharpen it at the same time. All right, put a Loctite on these. In the kit, you get these cleaning wipes. We're gonna use those to clean the prop. Then we do a second wipe, which is basically a phosphoric acid, sort of etch type thing. Then we put on the main etching primer. Show that the right ones. Oh, look at that, they're even numbered. Number one. Basically says, with gloved hands, wash it. And then, wipe it off with a dry rag. I'm prop speeding the uh, last bit of the shaft and the uh, rope cutter. So I'll give those a wash too. Just get a clean rag and wipe that off apparently. It'd be good if this was a light coloured rag. It talks about doing it until there's no residue left. It's a little bit hard to tell with a dark coloured rag, but second wipe is prop prep wipe. This is uh, metal conditioning with the uh, phosphoric acid in it. So, we need to push on and do the other uh, stage pretty much straight after washing this. Same process, wipe it with this, then wipe off with a clean rag. Obviously there's two main parts to this prop speed. This stage we're doing, which is all about surface preparation and the primer to make it stick. And then the final clear coat, which actually does the uh, releasing of any barnacles, etc. Like all two part products, we've got to open the base, stir the base thoroughly. Then we can add the hardener, stir that thoroughly, paint it on. In the kit, they give you a little stirrer. May as well use it. Looks kind of funky. All right, we really need to stir these solids that are stuck on the bottom. Get this a good consistency before we add the hardener. I'll do that, I'll be back. They say it takes about two to three minutes to stir the solids up, which for someone with my attention span is like two to three eternities, but we're getting there. What's it doing? Oh, that's right, stirring. Now I remember. The clear coat's a single part product, which is great because um, obviously we'll stir it, but we do need to get it on within three or four minutes of this going on and being touched right, the second coat. So suddenly if you're spending three or four minutes preparing the next one, you'd be really up against the clock. Apparently the timing is quite critical at prop speed. Okay, it's looking pretty good now. We're gonna add the hardener, stir that, start brushing it on. All right. I reckon we're pretty close to painting this on. So, we do one coat, we wait, we do a test where we press it. We want it to be, uh, you know, fresh enough that we leave a little imprint with a glove in the first coat, but so none of the prop seed comes off in the glove, so we know it's not too wet. Then we can do a second, and then we start uh, stirring up the clear coat, and then as soon as we pass the same test, touch it, nothing coming up in a glove, clear coat goes on. That's the process. So we're kind of against the clock from the moment we start painting this on. Last saw it in the pot like this. Won't dry that fast in the pot. You've got hours. But as soon as you start, game on. So hardness stirred in as well. Let's go for it.
would be interesting to experiment with a little foam roller on the primer. Maybe next time I will. Interesting to compare. All right, primer is on. Let's go straight into stirring and painting on the clear top coat, starting with the same blade we did first, so it's the oldest. Next time I think I definitely would go a little foam roller for the primer. I think it'd be easier to get a smooth coat and get it on faster too. Okay, looking done. All right, let's go look at these transducers. Bit of overpainted anti-foul here. Let's get that off first. Looking forward to seeing the uh, reef on the side scan sonar. So it's nice to have these clean and working their best when we get there. Although it does astound me how well they work with growth on them. It's incredible. But certainly they're not going to help them. This is a packet of light speed, which is essentially just the clear coat from Prop Speed. What it does come with though is a clear wipe, a small tube of the clear coat, or a little brush too. So we have clear coat left over from the prop. No point opening this, I don't think. Same stuff. But because we have the wipe, I may actually go and clean the other transducer first, use the wipe on both, get the remaining clear coat, put it on both, should be done. So a small prop speed will ultimately do a 21 inch prop, two coats of primer, one coat of top clear, and both transducers. I'm using the clear coat from the prop speed pack, but I'm using the wipe from the light speed pack. It'll be interesting to find out what this is because we will have a tube of clear coat and no wipe next time. We've actually still got clear coat left. So that means that one small prop speed kit could do a 21 inch prop, two sonar transducers, maybe three if you had a straight down one kilowatt deep, you know, transducer, and some underwater lights. Could pretty much do a lot. So that's pretty cool. I think the thing I've learnt is A, how far it goes, you could do those things, and B, I would definitely use a small foam roller for the primer. We'll try that next time, but it's good to get it done. One step closer to launching. That's nice. Well, thanks for watching. We're about to head off up the coast to Lady Musgrave Island. I'll be filming that, but we'll be out of mobile phone reception, so I'll upload that when we get back. That will also include all the footage from actually launching as well. So take care, and I'll catch you then. See ya.